Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from Automator, and today I'm excited to announce, you know, Isaiah spent a little bit of time on his HK toolkit, that URL over my head, you can go grab it. He uses a lot, and, and I used it 10 years ago, I used it for quite a bit then, I haven't used it recently, but I, I see you using a lot, and built some, especially if you're starting to use V2, some really cool functionality now. Yeah, definitely. So, basically the tool, just to give you a general idea of what it does, I have two sections here, hot keys and hot strings. And basically, it's just a hotkey manager and a hot string manager um, that allows you to search for stuff, right? So you, if you have a lot of hotkeys, the interesting thing about the hotkeys here is that you can add different types of things, whether you can launch a script, so you type your whole script, or if you want to launch a file or a folder, you can do that too. And uh, usually files and folders, usually as soon as you select something, it sets the name for your hotkey. Mm. If it is a script, right. yeah. you don't want that. If it is a script, it doesn't set a name. You just have to set a name for it. These are some uh, very uh, some advanced options. I remember that some of these guys, the hotkeys, uh, well, the checkboxes at the bottom work. These, I think they're working. I haven't actually double checked, but I think they. I already had the group window groups making your hotkeys sensitive to whatever window you were, or if it is not active, right? So it was either window active or window not active, the same thing. So at this point, you select your hotkey here. And in the end, what you had is, which is what I do, for example, I have this hotkey here, which what it does is that wherever I press control F12, it grabs the current path at the moment where I'm located and I create a folder in there. So it just goes ahead and asks me what I want to name the project, whatever, but it creates a folder and does a lot of quick stuff. That That's for me to quickly create a project. So if I, I hit used control to have as well, the same thing, it created five right? folders. It, yeah. it just, yeah, it just yeah. creates this folder, which already contains right. a, a basic layout of a script that I might want to create. So again, it is just to create hotkeys quickly, and it could be anything. It could be a whole script. It could be a file or a folder. And, and actually, that this is exactly what drew me to auto hotkey. I wanted a hotkey to open a program. And when I was searching for what could I do, auto hotkey came up. And now, for example, Spotify, I press Windows S and it opens Spotify, for example. And I had a list of programs. I just stopped using that. Hot strings, the same thing. Here you can add quickly a hot string, but just put in the expansion what is going to be expanded to and hitting add, and that's it. Or if you want to be a little bit more advanced, if you don't have anything selected, you hit add and it gives you this list in which you would have the advanced options like the uh, uh, star RC, which are options for a hot string and stuff like that. Whether you want to run a script or just run send text, that's what it does. This is what you're gonna expand and so on. So basically this is what you're gonna expand it to. So this is the abbreviation. And this is what you want to expand it to. I just gave you a little bit more space and you manually have to put the options up here instead of using the visual guide as this, right? That was all. So, uh, but the good thing about this is now that I not only have a quick peek at what they do, each of them, but also I could search. So now I could find anything that says date either in the abbreviation or on the expansion as well. So anything that contains the word date is actually filtered. And it is just a quick way for me to manage my hot strings. And if I forget about anybody, I just go ahead and put, oh, how did I, oh, that's how I did it. Then is that an in-string search, uh, meaning it, it's an exact match of what you type? Uh, yes, fuzzy it is. Match. So it's yeah. not a fussy match, right. So in any case, those two, I don't use it. Uh, well, I do use the hot strings very often, but I don't add very often to it. Um, yeah. But it's just a mind thing. It's just that I usually type more than what I think about hot strings. But the one that I do use very often is the live code right here. That's what I mainly use this thing for. I open with the hotkey and it's always there. Um, now, the few changes that we did was setting it up that I could change the version very quickly between, you know, yeah. Version one, version two. Basically, you have to have 
both versions installed. The good thing right now is that if you download version two, it also asks you to install version one. So now if you install, if you download version two, you have both versions at the same time. So don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, for example, let's do a quick version test here. So you have two ways of controlling this. One to set the default. This one here is the default. So if you select 32 bit, it every time you open the tool is going to start with this particular default. But during testing, I wanted to switch and actually you gave me the idea of switching really quickly between them. Um, so yeah, I, I just added this drop down in which you can definitely switch between them. So if I run the script, it gives me that is 1.135. We actually get, made a video recently about <laughs> uh, the changes in there. But notice that if I do 64 bit, now notice here it says 64 bit. And if I go ahead and switch to version two, it goes ahead and gives me an error because you cannot use this percent sign there, but this is your version two type of thing. So, uh, you can switch between them so long as it is installed. One of the things that I will add, I added it at the beginning of the, so let's say that you open the tool for the first time and you haven't configured it. It actually asks you what the path is for each of your auto hotkey um, uh, version one and two files. It automatically detects it if, it if it has been installed. So it gives you the default paths for them, but you can change them to whatever you want. But after that, um, we will have to change it via the um, the configuration file, which I haven't added the visual element of doing it in the GUI, but it's not a big issue after you have it set up is there. And the good thing about that is that the scripts, they are temporary. That means that if you run it, it's gone. You didn't have to save a file or something like that. It's just you don't have to be wondering, oh, I, did I save this? Did I not save it? Um, it's just a matter of running very quickly code and seeing if whatever you're testing works, which we did with the, the F15. Do you remember that we were doing the F10 to F15? We just I just went here, did that test, see if that worked out. That's it. We're gone. Well, I was going to say during the, the live call on Friday, had we have been using this, we would have identified the problem where that guy had a, what was it, like a 7,000 line script? Yeah. We didn't isolate it. We didn't pull it into its own environment, which somewhere else in that script, right, the, there was another hotkey. He had closed all of his scripts except for that one. <laughs> and then we didn't, we finally figured out, oh, it's something else there. If we had pulled it right. into here and then killed all the scripts, we would have and realized. just ran it. Yeah, it would, it would have been very quickly yeah. because um, we didn't have to, save a new file and see what it was. No, we just have to copy paste, check on it and let's go. And this is what I mostly use it for. Um, I do have snippets, which are things that you can add by just double clicking here. And you can create a, a piece of code that you use very often. I usually have this coordinate saver, which allows me to just go ahead and run it. And now I start click, 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 click. And if I hit escape, a new file should be created with, um, oh, well, I have it on the clipboard, I think. Um, what it does is that it goes ahead and saves all my, my- um, Yeah, the locations of them. Right, it, it usually, which is interesting. I actually had it, seems to be that I deleted that part, but it would have, um, saved it into a file that I later on could have just used it as a as a reference to uh, go. No, right. just copy paste it. You, you see this yeah, here? Okay. So it's, uh, it's, I it's have, you, right? right, it actually did that. So I, I could definitely just do again, click, 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 click. And if I go ahead and paste, cool. I have the, the, the clicks where it was supposed to be. And if I hit escape, now matter of me just having the clicks saved for testing or stuff like that. So again, I just get, uh, I just have a few pieces of code that are really, I don't want to uh, be writing over and over. And here at the top, I have different kind of like categories. Now I go to OBS. This is our pieces of code that I use for OBS. This is Zoom, this is uh, stuff that I have for Zoom and so on and so forth. So again, just 
having this allows me to kind of like organize my code really quickly and for testing quick testing um basically gui creation is awesome because i do very quickly a gui in here and when i'm satisfied with it i copy and paste it to my main script that means that i don't have to be saving and relaunching my script all the time i just create my gui here uh, until it looks how i want and that's it so yeah that's basically the idea with this particular tool. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's very powerful. And, you know, which we talked about this before, too. Studio, Site, VS Code, they all have ways for you to select the code in your script and run just it. And probably right. Notepad++ plus plus probably. Too. But there's a, this adds a lot of extra functionality and makes it just simpler and makes sure that you're, you know, isolating what you're doing, at least in that example. But, yeah. Very I cool. noticed... I noticed that when I was trying that with VS Code, the script, it added a tray icon in there, and there was no way for me to exit it. So after I tested like five or seven times, there yeah. were like seven icons in there, and then I had to go one by one exit them, and I was like, no, I, I'm not going to do that anymore. I have my tool that takes care of that. You know, so <laughs> there you go. So check it out. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.